Hello and welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. This is chapter four. Uh, we are going through our, our AP statistics curriculum in this chapter. We're going to be talking about the various displays and ways to summarize quantitative data. So, uh, when we're dealing with lots of numbers, uh, you know, I call it number vomit, okay? When we just have like lots of numbers that we're looking at uh, that are from the data that we've collected, uh, we need some kind of summary to do it because summaries help us look at large sets of data. Otherwise, it's just a list of numbers. It's like we're looking at the matrix, but we can't understand what it is we're looking at, okay? So without summaries, it's very difficult to grasp what's happening. So we want some, uh, some type of like summative number that will help us to understand the data a little bit better. But just like in the previous chapter, the best thing that we can do is to make a picture. Pictures tell thousands of words, or in this case, tell thousands of data, okay? Pictures are fantastic. However, the charts that we used in the last chapter, pie charts and bar charts, are for categorical data only. So we have a different set of charts and graphs that are used for specifically quantitative data. Now, the first one and probably the most popular that you end up seeing is called a histogram. And what a histogram does is it displays uh, that data that you'd be getting in a sort of a continuous measure, okay? So in the chapter example that you had from your book, you're looking at earthquake magnitudes. And the way that you start to create a histogram, um, they look similar to bar charts. And, and the idea is that you're gonna first create some bins, right? And you're gonna say like, this range is the zero to 99 bin. It's hard to write small. And this range is like the 100 to uh, 199 bin, et cetera, as you go down the line, okay? So you have this, uh, you, you create a range uh, for which you are going to include data in. Okay, we're going to call that a bin. Then the district, the actual distribution is the counts of how much is in the bin. So if these are, uh, you know, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, okay, our left hand side, our y coordinate over here is uh, the frequency. That is how some, how often something shows up. We can see. Uh, a pattern form that's a terrible looking uh, bin I am so sorry that bar oh that's even it's getting worse just leave it alone it'll never get better okay uh, I'm just look oh I've made it I'm f I've fallen apart okay anyway um, let's try this again we're gonna erase that <laughs> hey look it kind of looks like a histogram uh, you've got some bars here that essentially tell you uh, just how often something shows up, okay? The, the height of the bin tells us the frequency in which it shows up. Let's get past this page so that you don't have to see it anymore. Oh, look, that's a nice looking histogram. Look how straight those lines are. It's beautiful. Uh, there we go. So here's a histogram of the actual earthquake data that was collected for the book. You can see over here the frequency or the number of earthquakes is what's being shown in the bar height. And the bottom, the x-axis, is the actual magnitudes. Now, the bins that are set up here, this is from 3.0 to 4.0, but the actual bin is smaller than that, right? The bin, there's five of these bins between them, which tells me that this is going to be 0.2 within all of these. So these bars, like from here to here, is everything from 5.0 to 5.2, and then or 5.19, and this is 5.2 to 5.4. And so you can kind of see this range of earthquakes not super common, but as you start getting a little bit bigger, then we have a lot. This huge bar, which is just above the 7.0 magnitude, that's the number of earthquakes that showed up in this time period that we were looking at. And then it drops way back down, okay? So the heights tell us how much of something there is. Notice that the difference between this and a uh, bar chart is the gap matters, right? This gap right here matters. It tells us something about the chart, that there's no data here. Noth there was no earthquakes between 4.0 and 5.0 in, uh, in this brief 
amount of time that they were measuring things. So gaps in histograms matter. Um, they also help, uh, like we can also see with the histogram that uh, where the, the most popular data is, you can see that from like 6.0 to 8.0, that's where the bulk of the earthquakes happened. But as we get farther away from that, they kind of taper off, okay? So histograms, because they have a sense of order, they tell us a lot about the distribution, okay? Now, this is a measure of counts. You can do the same thing with a relative frequency histogram. Remember, the word relative almost always means percent, okay? Uh, notice that the two histograms are sh have the exact same shape, uh, but uh, this one, instead of showing a pure count on the left, is showing your percents. So if it says something that's relative, you need to make sure that you're uh, reporting that in terms of percents, okay? So that's our histogram. That's our most popular display uh, that you will likely see for quantitative data. We do have some other ones, uh, things that you would actually would have seen in probably uh, your algebra course way back in the day when you did a small unit in that. Um, we have these things called stem and leaf displays. Now, they show the distribution of a quantitative variable, just like histograms, but they preserve the individual values. So what we mean by that is we don't actually know between 6.0 and 6.2, we don't know how many of which number were in between this area. Uh, stem and leaf displays do that. So over here, we have a stem and leaf display. So this is some data for uh, 24 women at a health clinic um, about pulse rates. So here, this is what the histogram would look like. Notice that if you kind of like turn your head, right, if you rotate your head a little bit and, uh, and, and flip it, the shape is about the same. I hope everybody's turning their heads right now. So like stretch your neck out real good, okay? So you can see that the shape of that stem and leaf plot is about the same, but instead of it just being a bar that goes up that says we have this many here, it actually, that bar length tells us that it's 80, 80, 80, 80, 84, 84. Like it preserves the value inside, um, inside of the graph, okay? so. The way we create a stem and leaf plot is uh, kind of similar to that histogram, right? We, uh, we cut each data value into its leading digits. So these are the, this over here is the, the stem, okay? Uh, so the leading digit being 88776655. Eight, seven, seven, six, six, uh, we use the stems to label the bins. So we still have bin lengths. This one over here is the 80 to 85. This one up here is the 85 to 90. Uh, again, you can create that to be whatever size you need it to be. And then the stem and leaf displays just contain the information in the histogram. Uh, oh, oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> use, and then we use only one digit for each leaf, right? Either around or truncate the data values to one decimal place after the stem. So we took our data and we, uh, we used the, the, other, the, the other value, the, the other digit, I should say. Uh, to create these other values. So this is 56, 60, 64, 64, 64. The numbers are preserved while giving the same shape of the histogram. So that's a stem and leaf plot. Uh, finally, we have dot plots. Now, uh, you'll notice that a dot plot is very similar to a histogram. Uh, again, it preserves the shape. Unlike a stem and leaf plot, though, instead of using the numbers to create the shape, it's just using dots, okay? And they did this one sideways, but there's nothing wrong with doing a dot plot like this. In the same way, you can make, you can make the same graph this way, right? Uh, 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 these are my dots, okay? So in the same way, you can do it like this, uh, and you can see that same basic shape of the histogram. Uh, so it does what a histogram does. Uh, it's just instead of a, a solid bar, we've got uh, the dots being displayed to help us give shape to that particular uh, set of data. Okay. All right, we have one more display that we use. It's called a box and whisker plot, but we have some things that we need to learn about um, before we do that. So uh, that one's going to be held off, and I think actually we, we hold off on that one until the next chapter. 
so that's going to be in chapter five. There is one more, but it's in chapter five that we look at it. Uh, but for now, that's it. Uh, in the next set of videos, we're going to talk about how you describe a histogram now. So we can see a histogram and we can create it, but what we want to be able to do is uh, what what kind of language do we need to use when we're describing it and uh, what features do we need to make sure that we highlight. So that'll be in my next set of videos on chapter four. Thank you for watching this one and we'll see you another time. Bye.